Hi, I'm John, welcome to Premium Builds. Intel's older Lake 12th generation of CPUs have impressed across the board with their performance. Both Z690 and B660 motherboards allow high-speed RAM and you don't even need a K-series CPU. The normal non-K CPUs will allow you to use high-speed RAM with XMP settings on those chipsets and gain some good performance benefits. So you've decided that you want a 12th generation CPU, an i5 or an i7, but you want to know which RAM's best to pair with it to make sure you're getting all the performance the CPU has to offer. We're here to help you with that. In this video, we'll test a range of popular RAM kits. We'll show you the, the uh, performance impacts that different speed RAM can have on a 12th generation Alder Lake CPU. And we'll make some recommendations at the end as to what's the best RAM that you can buy without breaking the bank that will get you the best possible performance on these CPUs. We've tested a bunch of RAM kits available in popular specifications, all the way from 2400 MHz RAM, which is the slowest GDR4 RAM you can reasonably get, or is what happens if you forget to uh, set XMP when you set your PC up, all the way through to 3200 MHz, 3600 MHz, 4000 MHz manually overclocked RAM, and 4400 MHz Samsung BDI RAM to see what the performance impact is. We've done this testing in both games and some synthetic tests, so we can really nail down into where exactly the performance benefits lie. Alder Lake can of course run DDR5 RAM as well as DDR4. I've got a separate video investigating the performance impacts of that. However, DDR4 is definitely the sensible option and certainly the cost effective option to run 12th generation CPUs at the moment. You're gonna to want to stick around for this because some of our results are pretty wild, so let's dig into it. Let's get the boring stuff out of the way first with some synthetic testing. It is important though to dig into it to really understand where RAM can make a difference to the performance of your PC and the situations where it really doesn't. First, here's the CPU test in 3D Mark's Time Spy. This is a highly multi-threaded test using our 12700K to the full. It's designed to assess CPU performance in the context of gaming. As it turns out, it's also sensitive to memory speed. You can see here how detrimental to performance running 2400MHz CL16 RAM is. The score is 1500 points down on basic 3200MHz RAM. This is what happens if you fail to set XMP. Your RAM runs at these basic JDEX speeds, and that can really hurt performance. Both 3200MHz and 3600MHz CL16 RAM kits are running at XMP ratings here, and you can see they perform identically in this test, returning 16,000 points apiece. Finally, we look at the high-performance RAM kits. This is a 4400MHz RAM kit using Samsung BDI chips that we tweak further to improve performance. Firstly, at XMP settings, this kit runs at 4400MHz CL19, but in memory controller gear 2 mode. This, combined with the looser timings, offsets the higher frequency operation. Tweaking further brings us to 4000MHz CL16 settings in gear 1, and our third highest result. Finally, tightening timings to 4000 MHz CL 15, 16, 16, 36 brings us to our best score of 17,026 points, but it's marginal with only 100 points difference. All three configurations perform nearly identically with this high performance DDR4 RAM. Rendering is another task that can be memory intensive, but is it reliant on memory speeds? To find out, we ran Cinebench R20 and R23, and here are our results. First, looking at Cinebench R20, I hope you can see that ordered by result that there's virtually no trend here. 60 points is well within margin of error for this test, and we can see that the worst RAM specification, 2400MHz JDEX, is butting up against one of the best manually tuned RAM at 4000MHz CL17. 2666MHz CL16 ties to 3600MHz CL16 as well. This test doesn't demonstrate any coherent scaling with RAM speed. Cinebench R23 shows similarly unhelpful results. Again, this is all within margin of error for this test, and there's no conclusive trend alignment with RAM performance. The lesson here is that some tasks simply aren't dependent on RAM speed, and also that you shouldn't use Cinebench as a metric if you're tweaking your RAM and looking for performance improvements. In another test of productivity, we ran Blender, which is a very popular 3D content creation program, and we used uh, the CPU to render out a couple of the test bench scenes to see how the RAM speeds performed. I'm showing some simplified results here, just showing the fastest and slowest DDR4 RAM. And as a bit of a spoiler, I've included our DDR5 RAM kit as well, which is running at 6,000 megahertz, um, just to show that in these tests that we've run, you can see that the result in all three instances, 2,400 megahertz, 4,000 megahertz optimized, and even the DDR5 RAM is the same. All of these tasks took the same length of time to perform. This is another task that doesn't scale with RAM speed to any appreciable degree. I always have to add the caveat when I use Blender results in benchmarking, if you're looking to build a PC to use Blender, please don't use CPU tester results as a metric for the CPU you should buy for Blender. Any rendering on Blender should be done on a GPU. It's an order of magnitude faster than any of these CPUs, even the older Lake or the 5950X will be beaten by a pretty mediocre NVIDIA graphics card rendering these scenes out. So please, if you're looking to build for Blender, 
realize that this test is about CPU performance and not building a PC to make the most of that software. So some of our synthetic tests don't show any RAM speed scaling at all, and one of them does, but what about gaming performance? As a rule, games respond very well to increased RAM speed and reduced latency. This is because if you can get data off of this RAM faster and pass it to the CPU, the CPU can complete its tasks more quickly and process the game world faster. This results in higher FPS. We can demonstrate this effect using a number of tests on our Alder Lake CPU. First, Shadow of the Tomb Raider makes things easy for us by giving us a detailed breakdown in the in-game benchmark of what's happening with the game engine itself. Using minimum, average and maximum frame rates, we can see a clear trend in performance as we move up to faster RAM specifications. Whilst JDEX specification 2400MHz RAM languishes behind at 202fps average, the 3200MHz RAM improves to 227fps. The 3600 MHz kit to 239 FPS, the 4400 MHz kit to 244 frames per second. The manually tweaked 4000 MHz kit runs to 257 frames per second on average. Note the minimum and maximum frame rates increase accordingly. Now, this is all well and good, but is it representative of anything in the real world? This is just the game engine speed we're looking at, not the overall FPS. Well, if we look at the overall FPS output for this uh, benchmark, we can see the extent to which it can actually make a difference. Here we can see that the 4400 MHz kit returns the highest result, with the 4000 MHz RAM kit actually trading slightly behind. The XMP 3600 MHz kit is also close to the peak result. You can again see the clear detriment of slow RAM, with 2400 MHz 10% slower than any of the better options. As for the reversal of fortunes for the 4000 MHz manually tweaked RAM, well, XMP has settings for a number of timings that we didn't have time to optimize for this testing. The render thread often acts as a limiting factor and depends more on RAM bandwidth than latency. Overall, you can see the broad impact of tweaking RAM, but also the subtle nature of changes in timings and settings that can add noise into the results. Nevertheless, this test demonstrates how faster RAM assists CPU performance and allows games to run with less of a restriction from CPU's limitations, and that results in higher frame rates. Again, using the Rainbow Six Siege benchmark, we can see the overall trend of faster RAM assisting in frame rates. 2400 MHz is the slowest at 500 frames per second, 4000 and 4400 MHz options post with similar results from 530 to 540 frames per second average, and the 3600 MHz CL16 RAM kit posts the best results at 564 FPS average. Again, XMP likely takes optimizations to TRFC and other secondary and tertiary settings that deliver more consistent all-round performance here. Nevertheless, such as the performance of the i7-12700K in this game, we're really splitting hairs looking at the impact of RAM speed in this benchmark. You can see that even the slowest RAM delivers more than acceptable performance. However, for optimization's sake, we can still see that faster RAM does lead to better performance. Flight Simulator 2020 is a game, or simulator if you're taking it seriously, that really does place unique importance on the CPU performance. It's often the limiting factor in frame rates in this game, and lifting CPU capability directly translates to more frames on screen in a lot of circumstances. In this test, we use an AI piloted flight at low altitude across Manhattan and log frame rates for three minutes. Here again, we see the detrimental effect that using slow RAM, or not setting XMP on your RAM, has to performance. 2400 MHz languishes at 98 frames per second average. Faster RAM scales near linearly across the speeds on test, with 3600 MHz bringing a decent lift to 107 frames per second, and 4400 MHz and faster continuing to increase performance. Remember, with gear 2 and loose timings, this 4400 MHz kit isn't the fastest RAM on test here. The effect is subtle, but the trend is clear. Faster RAM helps this title, which is unsurprising given the CPU-heavy nature of performance limits in Flight Sim 2020. And finally, let's take a look at another modern title, Forza Horizon 5. This AAA open world racing game has a detailed inbuilt benchmark that allows us to peek under the hood and see what the game engine's doing. Firstly, we can see that the sim engine itself benefits hugely from improving RAM speeds. This is pretty unequivocal. Going from 2400 MHz JDEX specification to 3600 MHz CL16 nets a huge 70 frames per second average gain. Pushing to optimised 4000 MHz RAM at CL16 makes that 110 frames per second margin, over a third faster again. Note that this is the game engine itself, not overall FPS. Once the game has processed the game world, it prepares a render to pass to the GPU, and this is the CPU render stats that are also shown in the benchmark results. Here we see a less dramatic but still significant performance trend. The render process gains around 20 frames per second, or 10%, going from the slowest RAM to the moderately well-optimised 3600MHz CL16 RAM. And finally, do these under-the-hood numbers make any real-world difference? Well, they can do, as shown by the overall frames per second output of the sim, with different RAM speeds. Optimising RAM speed sees an easy gain of around 15 frames per second in the overall benchmark score. The slowest RAM here is running at 165 frames per second, with the faster kits all tied at around 180 frames per second. 
To conclude then, throughout these tests we've seen an overall trend, particularly in games, of faster RAM assisting performance. We hope you'll excuse the somewhat messy nature of the data. It is what it is. The way RAM interacts with performance and CPU is a complex web, with not all software responding in the same way to differences in either latency or RAM speed, and as you've seen, some things simply aren't impacted by RAM speed at all. There is no one best specification of RAM for all usages or scenarios, but you can certainly improve your odds of getting better performance most of the time by picking a good RAM kit. Also, one of the takeaways from this video is you can seriously harm your system by choosing a RAM kit that's inadequate or too slow, and you certainly don't want to limit the performance of a 12th gen CPU by pairing it with slow RAM. We'd also like to address the issue over the gaming benchmarks. If you look at the settings, you can see that we have run these settings at 1080p high settings to give somewhat real world um, data of showing the difference that RAM speed can have or doesn't have in any particular game. But yes, we've run these tests with an RTX 3080 at that resolution, which isn't really an appropriate resolution for that powerful GPU. It's quite correct then to say that at 1440p and up, that the differences we've seen in RAM speed here really won't make much of a difference to your gaming experience. However, what is important is that RAM speed sets a baseline for CPU performance in games. And it may be that if you play particularly CPU demanding games or as games advance through the years, you'll find those limits sooner if you've got slower RAM. A system with badly chosen RAM may show performance problems where one with well-specified RAM won't. Alder Lake CPUs are exceptionally high performance and it'd be a real shame to limit that potential by pairing them with slow RAM. So my takeaway points then for this video and from my testing are make sure you buy acceptably fast RAM with tight timings. Ensure you enable XMP so that you're not running it at those lower speeds unknowingly. Don't overpay for the fastest RAM because it doesn't actually bring you any significant performance benefit for over mid-range RAM that's more reasonably priced. And it can actually lead to some stability issues as well. And if you do want to overclock, the Alder Lake memory controller appears to be stable at 4000 MHz 1 to 1 ratio or gear 1, so that's a memory clock of 2000 MHz, and that seems to be a sensible sweet spot to aim for for manual RAM tuning. Finally, I'll make some recommendations for the best RAM to buy for your Alder Lake CPU right now. Overall, on the basis of cost, availability, and ease of setup, we still recommend 3600MHz CL16 RAM for Alder Lake CPUs. This RAM brings you the bulk of performance improvements with a minimum of money and time invested. There are Crucial Ballistics and G-Skill Rip Jewels 5 kits available in 2x8GB format at under $100. They've got decent timings, and they represent great bang for buck. If you need 32GB, around $150 to $180 gets you G-Skill or those ballistic kits in 2x16GB format. If you fancy some manual tweaking or want faster RAM, there are also currently Crucial Ballistic Max 4000 MHz CL18 kits available at around $90 for 16GB, and there's G-Skills Rip Jewels 5 at the same pricing. They represent a nice option as they'll run Gear 1 mode and give roughly the same total latency as 3600MHz CL16 kits. Grabbing those and tweaking timings downwards could yield some pretty impressive results, but they'll work just fine at XMP for one-click setup as well. I hope you found this video useful and informative. Please do check out premiumbuilds.com where we've got this kind of analysis and testing and loads of advice to get you the best parts for your next PC.